Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks to DC Rebirth, the content here has been very DC-centric lately. I planned to change that this week with an analysis of a great Marvel title I recently read, but then I remembered that this week marks the 10th anniversary of Superman Returns. So tune in this weekend for an analysis of Captain America number 2. For right now though, let's talk Superman Returns. It's hard to imagine a film more underestimated and misunderstood by its critics. Long before Zack Snyder's films earned the place of the most divisive superhero movies, Superman Returns split its own audiences down the middle. Some felt it was too reminiscent of the Donner films, and failed to feature enough action. Others felt it missed the point of the Donner films, and was too morose. But both sides completely missed the profound statement of the film. Superman returns to a post-9-11 world, far changed from when he left it. It's a world that has moved on, one that asserts that the world doesn't need a Superman. Clark must ask himself, is there still a place for a hero in this darker world where truth, justice, and the American way have turned to gray? Critics miss the profound resonance of this storyline, for the film itself is asking the same question of its audience. It's not 1978 anymore, it says. You live in a world in which terrorists attack on American soil, where fighting the enemy has become a murky debate over who and where the enemy is and how best to protect ourselves. With the Patriot Act, the War on Terror, and rampant political and cultural strife, the American way had never been more difficult to define than it was in 2006. The movie asks you, in this world we live in, do you really think there's a place for a shining bright hero who always does the right thing and never tells a lie? Can we, can you, even believe in that and find inspiration in such a simplistic idea? If the movie itself had simply answered yes and given us a direct return to 1978 optimism, audiences would have disregarded it, taking it as proof that we've outgrown such ignorant notions as heroes. If Superman Returns had chosen to bolster that assertion that heroes are childish and pushed a worldview of moral ambiguity and nothing but violent consequences to any of our choices, well, Man of Steel did that in 2013, and we've seen how it was poorly received. We know the world is complicated. We know the right thing to do isn't always apparent. And we know that despite our best intentions, sometimes we're damned if we do and damned if we don't. But as individuals and as a culture, don't you dare tell us it's not possible. That somewhere deep within us there isn't the potential to rise above our current state and be better than we currently are. Despite our most adolescent and nihilistic moments, the American culture of 2006 and today screams, don't tell us that heroes do not exist. Don't tell us they do. Just make us believe it. Superman Returns does this beautifully, building to a crescendo in which the most cynical part of our soul believes it can be saved. As I said in the beginning, Superman himself is uncertain about his, the hero's, place in this world. He returns to the Daily Planet as Clark, is welcomed only by Jimmy Olsen, finds that Lois has moved on with a fiancé and a child, and that she's won a Pulitzer for her article, Why the World Doesn't Need Superman. How does he respond? He hits the bar with Jimmy and doubts himself over his bottle. Decidedly un-Superman-like and unheroic behavior. As an audience for a Superman film, we know of course that he will choose to don the S-Shield again. But for the moment, his character reflects the insecurity and cynicism of our culture. What change is that? The second he's needed. When he sees Lois's plane in trouble on the news, he doesn't stop to decide. He doesn't hesitate for lack of belief in himself. He runs outside with purpose. The familiar John Williams score begins to throb, and he runs into the camera, pulling his shirt open to reveal the S. S for Superman. S for saved. And he's rewarded. How does the crowd react to his rescue? Do they lament the damage the falling wings of the plane did to a neighborhood? Do they bemoan the cost of removing the plane from the baseball field? No, they'd save that negativity for Zack Snyder's films. Here they stand and cheer. Superman has returned. Their hope has returned. They can be a great people. They've just lacked the light to show them the way. Fast forward now toward the end of the film when Lois and her son Jason are trapped in Lex's sinking yacht. Who rushes in to save them but Richard, Lois's fiance? We expected Superman, but he had his hands full with the earthquake in Metropolis. Richard, who Marv Wolfman's novelization describes as idolizing Superman, flies into danger in his plane to rescue Lois and Jason. Richard has been admirable in every way throughout the film. Though we might be tempted to dislike him, standing in the way of Lois and Superman's relationship, we can't. He's a good father and fiancé, 
patient, understanding, and striving to do the right thing, like Superman himself. Richard is a picture of the Superman fan in the audience. Before he can leave the yacht with Lois and Jason, though, disaster strikes. The yacht breaks in two and falls into the ocean. Lois is knocked unconscious, and the door to the kitchen they're trapped in slams shut. We see Richard holding Lois and Jason in the last remaining pocket of air, sinking to certain death. We want to think that Superman will save the day. He's been saving the day in the film thus far, but this film is tinged with our darker reality. Richard himself, a good man between Lois and Superman, is proof that not all is as we'd like it in the universe of this film. And Singer allows the boat to sink from our view, the sad music to fade out completely, and allows us to settle into a moment of reflection on the brutal reality of their fates. He gives us just long enough to feel our desperate want for Superman, for heroism, to assert itself in our bleak world and show us it's not so dark. Then to our own inward cheers, two red boots land on the yacht door, and the wreckage begins to rise out of the water. Superman opens the door and takes Richard by the hand, like God reaching for Adam from Michelangelo. Superman saves Richard, but it is Richard holding on to and saving Lois and Jason. We see a picture of what belief in heroism can do for us. It pulls us up from the overwhelming waves, gives us the boost we need to help others in return. Superman Returns acknowledges our world, acknowledges our disbelief, yet strikes to the core of our need and shows us a hero. Unfortunately, audiences like obstinate five-year-olds turn their head at the medicine that would bring them relief. Unfortunately, many audiences still do. I could go on about this film for hours, but for the sake of short digestible videos, I'll end this one here and pick it up in part two with a look at the carefully planned out visuals of the film and how they deepen the theme of our need for heroism and inspiration. Don't worry, my weekend new release analysis will still be Captain America number two. Part two of my look at Superman Returns will drop somewhere in between. In the meantime, I encourage you to watch the film again. See what you might have missed the first time around. If you found this video interesting, click like and subscribe. And as always, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the superhero stories you love. Thanks for watching.